uh, funding drivers. Motivation for major projects. I, I did my homework on this. I looked all throughout the world, all throughout time, and I asked myself, what drove people to spend a lot of money on really expensive things? Money, uh, 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 financial capital, or human capital? And I wanted to make a list of all the costly projects and find out what drove those projects. Is it discovery? Is it the urge to know? Is it war? And I was going to fill a whole book with all the ways people justified spending a lot of money. And I only found three drivers. Only three. <laughs> only three. OK, Great Wall of China, that was a defense project, protecting themselves from invading um, the Mongols. The Mongols. The Manhattan Project, of course, defense. That's where we built the bomb, the A-bomb, defense. Defense is a polite way. It's really war. It's the urge to not want to die. <laughs> That's really what this is. I don't want to die, so I'm going to spend money. The Eisenhower Interstate. That's a defense project. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you knew that. <laughs> Who did not know that? Raise your hand. Okay. Our interstate system is a defense project. Eisenhower, in Europe, as commander in chief of the European Theater of Operations, saw in Germany. Because Germany's invented the car, the internal combustion engine car, and they invented the roads to drive the car on. They invented the modern interstate system. The roads, the structure of the roads, the cloverleaf, the on-ramp, the off-ramp, the bridges, the tunnels, the whole system of how, what you do with a car on a road came out of Germany. And the Autobahn was built to specifications where they could move tanks and personnel and material, and it could rain, and it could hail, and the road is still there. Meanwhile, in America, our roads get washed out uh, when, it, when it drizzles. <laughs> Eisenhower said, I want some of those over here in America. And so using the specifications inspired by the Autobahn, we built the interstate system. So that if we had to move tanks and other material for war, we'd be able to do it. And it also served an economic force by the uh, trade between states. The Apollo Project is defense. We went to the moon. Well, by the way, we cleansed our memory of this period and say, we're discoverers. <laughs> we went to the moon because it's there. <laughs> no, we went to the moon because we were at war. And I'll demonstrate that to you in a couple of moments. But trust me, for at least a few slides, that it's a defense project. Columbus voyages, the Magellan voyages, the TVA, all promise of economic return. It's another great incentive to spend money. Then you have a third one, praise of power. Power of either deity or royalty. You get the pyramids, the cathedral building of Europe, castles. What you get are three drivers, and only three. There are other reasons why you might spend money, but if you want to spend big money, history tells us it's got to fall under one of these three categories. Discovery isn't there. The urge to know isn't there. It's not there. I wish it were. It's not. It's just not. Pyramids are big tombstones for pharaohs, right? Let's, tell you, let's get back to that space comment. Space mantra. You ready? This is what we always hear and retell. This is Kennedy's from Kennedy's speech. I believe you can hear him say this, right? He's got that New England accent. I believe this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before the decade is out, landing a man on the moon, returning him safely to the earth. No single project will be more impressive or important for the long range exploration of space. None will be so difficult or expensive. So, in one sentence, he has the word exploration and expensive. But in my previous slide, Exploration is not one of these drivers. So how does he get us to the moon if it's only for exploration? Because what you never hear is another part of this same speech, two paragraphs earlier. Here's the part you never hear. If we are to win the battle that is now going on around the world between freedom and tyranny, the dramatic achievements in space, which occurred in recent weeks, Russia had Yuri Gagarin in orbit around the Earth. 
and we didn't have nothing. We didn't have, we, our stuff was blowing up on the launch pad. <laughs> As did Sputnik in 1950, the impact of this adventure on the minds of men everywhere who are attempting to make a determination of which road they should take. This is a battle cry against communism. This preceded that paragraph. And that's what dislodged the money from Congress. Not that. Okay? But we tell ourselves it's that, and we somehow are okay with that. Here is the front entrance of Kennedy Space Center, Florida, a bust of Kennedy, and on the granite on the right-hand side are the words, I believe this nation should commit itself. There's plenty of room on that side. <laughs> they could have put kill the commies. They could have put that up there. But it's left out. So we remember Kennedy as this great leader. But we were simply at war. So I just want to make it clear that ineffective drivers, wonder me, none of this works. None of it. For big money, it doesn't work. Wonderment, this new ocean, the calling, destiny, curiosity, the urge to explore, encoded in it, none of this. None of this. Okay? And not least, not, certainly not science. Science has never driven the huge expenditure of money. Yeah, we discovered how to split the atom, that's because somebody wanted a bomb. The person writing the check wanted the bomb. They didn't care who, what physics was doing. What do they care? 